Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video we are going to be unboxing this delivery and we're also going to be having a look at my Semper Vivum collection. Yes, those of you who've been waiting, you will see my Semper Vivum. <laughs> right, let's get started. I have just got home from work and been greeted by a parcel from Semper Vivum by post and I thought I need to get these unboxed right now let's do that let's get a video filmed so it is um, approaching half past six in the evening it's lovely and cool we haven't had any horrible hot sun today so included with my package of Semper Vivum is a little thing from Becky at Semper Vivums by Post saying thank you for your order we hope you enjoy the plants as much as we do see our advice page including video on how best to care for them and we look forward to hearing from you again I did reach out to Becky I did tell her that I was going to be filming an unboxing uh, and also suggested maybe she might like to do some sort of collaboration type meetup something um, I haven't heard back from her yet so we'll just have to we'll just have to wait and see you won't we so I don't think there is an advice note in here I can't see it on the top so I'm just going to quickly pull up my order right so I have opened the box uh, there was some newspaper just in the top plus my little note and I have opened the first one just to see I just I just wanted to see I knew they came bare root, so that that saved on post and packing. This is Sempervivum Engels. Lovely looking plant. What have I got there? One, two, three, four rosettes. They say that they were grown in nine centimetre pots and then they unpot them for shipping. <laughs> What's nice is you can see the sort of soil they're growing in. Oh, look, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just like my mix. <laughs> Pretty dry, very gritty. <laughs> yeah, I tried to go for a mixture of colours and textures and also some different things to things that I've possibly already got or have had before from another supplier. That would have been surreal succulents. <laughs> she certainly wraps things up very nicely. I've got one that's arrived without its tag actually attached to it so I'm going to continue unboxing everything else that has got a tag on it and then see if I can work out what I've got left. Okay, this is Sempervivum Calcarum Guillaume. Calcarum? Calcarum? Maybe? Wow! Oh, wow! Okay. Look at that! There are so many pups on there. Oh my goodness. Now this looks a lot like Tinctorum, but the tips are much redder and they also flush a bit further down each leaf. I thought that was rather beautiful. I'm not even going to try and count how many crowns I've got there because that's absolutely stunning stunning this one is called Bellissima and it certainly is wow aren't they absolutely gorgeous that actually looks like it's 
maybe one mother plant and then all her pups. Wow. And they need a little bit of a dust off because uh, obviously they've been in loose soil in newspapers so that there's a little bit of dusting on there but I mean they're pretty clean. This one is called Polaris. Do you remember that Sempervivum change colour as the seasons progress? So what you see on the website might not necessarily be quite what you receive but it just depends what time the photograph was taken, time of year the photograph was taken and what time of year that you ordered your plants. Lots of Sempervivums have a really different autumn colour to their normal spring summer. So this is one of the slightly bluer ones I went for. It's called State Fair. So State Fair is what you'd call Glaucus. It's that sort of blue-green. And it's flushed with a very pale pink. And you compare that to Engels, which is almost a more purpley, purpley pink, I would say. This is another Sempervivum calcarum, calcarum, not sure. Um, and this one is Mrs. Giuseppe. Lots of Italian references. Don't know why. They're not uh, particularly Italian. <laughs> Quite a pronounced spikiness to that one. And woe betide anybody who says they look the same. <laughs> this oh, wow this cracker is called hailing like hailing island i guess wow look at that color oh that's stunning and normally you see the the, the colouring on the tips of the leaves, but here you've got the colour kind of flushing out from the centre. Oh, gorgeous! A huge rosette in the centre there. Right, I've now got four unlabeled scents and four labels. So let's see if we can work out what we've got. I have got pictures, thankfully, on my phone, so I can double oof, double check. Oh, you're huge. These are magnificent plants, absolutely stunning. Wow. Okay, something's very green, just with a tiny red tip. And the last one to unpack. Okay, so we've had Engels, Mrs. Giuseppe, Guillaume, Sunray Magic. Which one are you? might be you. Don't know. State Fair we had, Polaris we had, Heart 
is very orangey. Hailing we had. Gold Marie. Deep Fire. Hmm. So Deep Fire, Gold Marie, Heart, and Sunray Magic. Oh, I don't look like any of those. <laughs> Summary Magic is supposed to have very bright red centre, but none of these. Oh. Oh, wait, it's you. Okay. So, again, because we're, we're not at the same time of year that the photograph was taken, the redness of it is there, but it's just tucked down. It's receded a little bit into the, the crown. Okay. That is... Sunray magic. Deep deep fire is another scarlet plant. Uh, it doesn't look like any of those. It's got to have green tips, red centre, which is closest to that one. Looking at the picture for deep fire, it has got some sort of slight fuzziness so maybe uh, that is you there is tinges of pinky red right down between the leaves I might have to um, just label these as what I think they are and then swap them over when their true colours come out <laughs> Ah, Gold Marie. Doesn't look like any of you. This is why it's so difficult to identify varieties of Sempervivum. When somebody sends you a photograph of Except for even variety, they can be so ridiculously similar to a, a different one that it is impossible to work out what that plant is for a mere mortal. I think, unless you are the grower, <laughs> yeah, all bets are off. That's quite a, a peachy with red flushing down so I've taken photographs of those four and I will send them on to her and just say is that what I think it is is what you think it is <laughs> I'm starting with a terracotta pot this one is quite nice and shallow but nice wide top so that you can look at the crown I'm going to pop some crock in the bottom as drainage material just stop that hole getting blocked up with compost, soil, grit, whatever because as we know the worst thing in the world for Sempervivum is too much wet. I've got some seed and cutting compost in here, it's peat free and that's pretty low nutrient because seeds don't need nutrients it will actually, um, and with cutting as well, it can burn them and prevent root growth so a low nutrient seed and cutting compost and lots of grit lots of horticultural grit <laughs> this one has just popped itself off the mother plant not a problem it's got tons of root and even if it didn't have tons of root it would still root <laughs> it would still be fine what I was doing was just coming in with thumb and forefinger and pulling out dead leaves particularly from the mother plant she's got quite a lot going on around her base that's where they will naturally start to go from so if you get a plant and it seems to have dead leaves on the outside completely normal that's completely normal to have that foliage dying off from the outside if the plant looks like it is going black in the middle you've got 
more of a problem. I like to try and kind of dome the soil so that any water does tend to run away. Um, but because these have got roots, I also need to make a little bit of a, a hole for them to go into. And I'll bring the soil back up around them. And there it is. I'm now going to go ahead and do all the others and then when we come back I will show them to you and we will also look at all the rest of my Sempervivum but that's for a day when it's not getting dark. <laughs> it's another day and we are now looking at my Sempervivum collection. So at the front here are the new 11 ones that I've just bought and towards the back are some of the projects I've done on camera and then some just general plantings. Some of them I've tried to keep a single variety uh, but as the birds have kindly mixed them up for me, I've gradually started to incorporate them into mixed plantings. And actually, I really love the mixed plantings. <laughs> Let's have a closer look. My guesses on the ones that I couldn't identify in the parcel turned out all to be correct, actually, which is pretty nice. This is Mrs. Giuseppe. Polaris. Deep Fire, State Fair, Gold Marie, Hailing, Engels, Sunray Magic. Heart, Guillaume, and Bellissima. This is a project I did some time ago. It's the modern hanging basket. I have had to replant it, and in fact, just recently, as with lots of these decorative things, they don't last forever. Um, they start to look a little bit tired because you're not keeping them in normal conditions but it did really well and for a really long time so I thought I would replant it we have my three tier wedding cake <laughs> that's really nice it's filled out really well obviously the top stuff gets really dry and the birds come along and pick everything out but you can see that the lower plants are getting quite nice and established now and quite big. Originally the plants in this pot were silver spits but um, I don't know that they still are. It might be one of those things where the birds have dug them up and I've kindly got something completely different in there. <laughs> this is a pot of arachnoidium or the cobweb sempervivum. This one's labelled Ruby Heart, but again, I don't know whether it actually is anymore. This is Chocolate Kiss. It's one of those big, fleshy hybrids that um, seems to be a little bit more tender than others, but actually this year it's done pretty well. I did have three plants of it and I lost two, but the third one is, is doing well. This is one I have labelled as Kermit. This one is a mystery. This one is labelled as Virgil. And does look quite true to form actually. This is Rosie. No pups this year, just, just the mother. 
this one's another mystery although actually it does look like there's a couple of varieties in there we've got quite a glaucous blue green but then also quite a bright green now this is a mystery this is one of my mixed plantings and actually those big ones in the middle have done so well this year here's the pot I replanted during my Q&A last year looking great another mixed planting and another mixed planting these tend to be ones that I've got from being q or the garden centre in mixed packs part of me really likes to keep name varieties separate so that I know that's what they are but other parts of me really love the mixed plantings and how they all look together all the different colours and textures and sizes I just think they're beautiful so <laughs> one of my next projects is actually going to be a big planter I've bought quite a lovely big shallow bowl that I fully intend to plant up in a mixed planting and um, yeah that should be my next Sempervivum project with you and of course the last plant to share with you is my mother's engineering brick <laughs> um, she planted this so long ago I lost her in 2000 to ovarian cancer and um, when my dad moved out of our family home to go into the nursing home I rescued this from the garden <laughs> it's one of the few things I have from the garden and um, yeah it has a very very special place in my heart right well that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching please remember to like share and subscribe to me here on youtube and until next time bye <laughs>